Well, welcome back, for sure. Um, just to make sure that we get like the most out of this conversation, we gotta start off. You guys are the actors of a generation. You're icons, okay? Literally defining the craft for so many of us with the characters that you've brought to life. But acting started for each of you, if I'm not mistaken, on the stage. Is that right? No. No? Okay. <laughs> For me, yes, to a certain extent. Okay, so extent. for you, it did. Yeah, I went to the University of Texas at Arlington, uh, uh, have a degree in theater. Represent? Uh, you know, uh, uh, they didn't find me in a tight t-shirt at a, you know, soda fountain. But they put you, they put you in one as Why soon as they could. Why don't yeah. Yeah. ASAP. Yeah. So, so what brought you to? Well, I, I was trained at Northwestern. Okay, here, big shout so out. Big shout out. So what happy up? to be back in Chicago. Thank you. That's I've made right. a number of films here that I can't name. Nope, nope, we don't. What? But they're in the rom-com genre. Yes, yes. One of my faves, one of my faves. Um, but, um, so I was trained in stage theater. Yes. But I was never a professional actor on stage wow. to that extent. So, um, in large part because they, um, like with Lou, we just got started so early. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, yeah, I've never made that jump. I'll say it yet. Yet. So, um, yet is yeah. the key word. Yeah. Yet is the key word. Absolutely. Look forward to that. So when it came to delving into acting and under any circumstance, when did it first kind of hit you that this was something that spoke to you, through you, for us? Yeah. Wow. Do you know your moment? Yeah, yeah actually. Tell us about it. You know, it's, it. First of all, it's a genetic <laughs> life. I remember it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's it does, right. And it does run in family. It does. Um, I, I, it's funny because I... Uh, uh, in high school, I was doing a lot of, uh, in Texas, uh, the University Interscholastic League and, you know, competing in drama. And I was doing well, and people were awarding me. And so, you know, you get the, uh, uh, the positive reinforcement, of course. But initially, I wanted to be a writer. Oh, uh, and I, by the way, I have uh, uh, some, yeah, I have some of the books uh, uh, that I wrote with my wife, who did all the illustrations right, right. there. Come the on, Tinder now, make box. Make some noise. Make some noise. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, uh, I've just finished. I literally finished uh, the editor's notes on the sequel last week. Nice. Right. But I went to my dad. My dad. My dad's a uh, you know he grew up in North Carolina and he's you know pretty much Texas by osmosis <laughs> and uh, talks like this. Lived down in Flower <laughs> Bluff down in Texas. And uh, when I was about 12 or so, he said. So, what do you think you want to do for a living? And I said, well, I want to be a writer, Dad. He goes, you might want to think about something where you could make more money. So I come back a year later and I went, I know now, I know, I know Dad, I want to be an actor. <laughs> that wasn't what I was thinking. Uh, so, you know. so yeah, that, 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 that started the process. I love it, I love it. Jeremy, what about you? Mine started at seven when a woman named Lois Hunt in our neighborhood in Alexandria, Virginia, put on like Shakespeare plays in her backyard with what? all the neighborhood kids. So I loved it right away. I was in an old play called The Bluebird of Happiness. Okay. Um, was the first uh, part I ever had, and I played the dog. Speaking of all, you know, like one of the characters. Uh, and uh, really never looked back. I did a couple of plays through high school. Fortunately, I was not cast in two separate parts in high school. Oh. That, that's, that, made me want to be an actor even worse. Okay, okay. Um, having met uh, the little amount of adversity that was ever set in front of me, mm -hmm. um, it really helped. It, yeah. it gave me, I mean, I remember just being so upset that I didn't get to play Fagin wow. in Whoa. Oliver. Whoa. The uh, pickpocket. They wanted me to play Oliver. I'm a senior in high school. Or maybe a junior. I couldn't do it, right? I couldn't even audition for that. So get this, even um, ignominiously, there I sit in the fabulous work. Yeah, that is a, yeah, in the orchestra. I play cello. I was in the orchestra yeah, walk, yeah. watching that kid Juan walk and almost get his name <laughs> playing Fagin. Right? So I'm down there watching the kid because I play the, in the orchestra, right. which is not cool. I, I disagree. Still. I disagree. Amen, bro. Gotcha. <laughs> um, and then was uh, at the end of college at Northwestern. A, a whole bunch of shit happened in one moment, and I got I got signed by a Los Angeles agent. Yes, that, that was also right the moment when uh, Chicago bloomed. Right. Talent, those theaters blew up, coming off of what Second City had already done. Right to SNL, Chicago, um, uh, Steppenwolf, and all them. So I was in. I, I was swept up in that Love it. bloom in that season. They're also only looking for 19-year-old white leading men. Okay. To be the next Judd Nelson or the right, next right. Andrew McCarthy, and so th th I was—they were on assignment to go find more of them. Um, I'll make it quick because of um, 
Well, of everything, like everything else, because of George Lucas. He well, did um, American Graffiti, <laughs> which uh, five years later, like, you know, gosh, we should make movies about kids. Right. So they did. If it's Ferris Bueller and Rick's right. Business and so forth, that was what happened. And Hollywood said, wow, you mean they were selling more tickets, movies about young white boys than we ever have before? Well, and before so that was the mindset of our culture, right, as wrong right. as it was in that regard. Which made me feel very special. Which made you feel very really fucking pioneer. I, I, I was you were a fucking wall down, wall breaker. This guy package. broke in. You know, Absolutely. I was ambiguously brown. We get it. No, and and is, successful in, in a way that was not yes. possible back when you did it. Yes. You, you were the first in so many ways. So that's why I even bring this up. Absolutely. Is to tell you, we, we got a real trailblazer sitting up here tonight. No, and it's not me. No, come on. You, you too. For real. You are too. Well, I'll, I'll buy Icon. Yeah, oh, absolutely, Icon. But I had oh, lots sure. of helping hands at a moment for. I'm glad I got to explain that how that went down. Of course, no. But my Thank love you. of acting, I think, is what you're talking about, and that absolutely. happened at a very early age. And I, I felt it. I felt pulled to it, um, and now looking way back, of course, I was supposed to be doing this. It, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, this is where you need to be because we needed you here. That is the truth. Um, Luke, to that point, I think your your ambiguously brown is such a phenomenal thing that maybe in today's market people wouldn't understand the value of it because obviously we look for representation. But there is a place in space or a time in history where any form of representation that was positive was super appreciated, and there were so many ethnic roles that you were able to portray. Can you recall how many different ethnicities you brought to screen? Oh my gosh, man, you know, everything from Inuit in the far north to, you know, uh, to Filipino, which I right. am, to yep, yeah. you know, many, many native uh, nations. Uh, you know, I've been Latino adjacent my entire right. career right. and have been very, very proud. So true, it's so true. Uh, and I have two stories that, that uh, I'm particularly proud of. Uh, the, one of the first films I wrote uh, was a movie called Ambition. Mm -hmm. Didn't come out the way I hoped it would. I think the director ruined it. But uh, 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 Cecilia Peck was my leading lady, and her father was the great Gregory Peck. Mm -hmm. And so I got to go have dinner at their house one night, and we were sitting there uh, having a glass of wine on the back porch with Greg. <laughs> and he goes, Lou, you put me in mind of my good buddy Tony Quinn. And I went, I'll, I'll take that. I'll be the Anthony Quinn of my generation. Of course. Yeah, 100%. Of course. Because like that, he played Inuit and Greek and Latino right. and, you know, Native American. So, so um, that, that was a moment in time where there, there just weren't as many actors of color. Mm -hmm. And so I got to represent a lot. Uh, and the other night that I remember very, very well, uh, I was uh, having uh, dinner at a wonderful uh, Italian restaurant up on Sunset Boulevard, which no longer exists, I think, uh, Il Soleil. Fantastic place. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Mr. Sidney Poitier was in there. Oh. And, yeah. And, uh, hello. Uh, so I waited until he finished his meal. Word to the wise. Uh, Always. <laughs> and, and I saw that his wife looked over and we and, and thought, oh, okay, so it's cool. She, she recognized me. And I went on and I just, I, I gushed for like, you know, five minutes about how he opened doors. He, he didn't open, he kicked down Absolutely. doors. And, and, you know, what, what an inspiration and what, and what a real trailblazer. And I, and I said to him, I said, you know, Mr. Poitier, I, I'm a leading man today because of you. Absolutely. Specifically because of you. Come on, make some noise for that. Uh, There's a truth. Absolute truth. And you know what he did? In his great charm and compassion and kindness, Mr. Poitier said to me, he goes, oh, no. You're a leading man because you're a good actor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. I still be crying to this day. Yeah. To this day, I'd be crying. Wow, that is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And I love the, the idea, and I'm curious if it still happens to you. Are you ever starstruck by anyone else that you've either met in the past or oh, yeah. could meet? Dude, I'm, I, I'm a fan. I'm a I love fan it. of people. You know? Yes, yes. I'm looking at these conventions. Like, oh, 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 you know, uh, just because I, I love good work. I see people who do good work, and and uh, uh, it's still magical to me. You know, I, I've never gotten cynical about that. Never. Got, I, I, you know, gotten cynical about the industry and you sure. know how how you know tough it can be. But but uh, and and how they keep changing the rules on us. But um, when it comes to artists. I'm, I'm a huge fan, and some of the people that I, I, you know, I'm in awe of. I, I'm sad that I, I'm never going to get a chance to you worked with Nicholson, which you know blows me away. He's not doing it anymore. I'm sad that I'll never have that opportunity. 
uh, you know, I, I, I'm partners with Robert De Niro in the Tribeca Grill in New York. Uh, yeah, I, I've been one of the original partners since the 90s. Why am I waiting in line? <laughs> I don't know that, Lou. I just texted you and they said put him in the corner booth. I don't see what the problem is. You call me, you call, you call me, I'll pick up the phone, I'll say, Dermot, Dermot, where would you like to sit? No, he doesn't call me Dermot, he doesn't know my name. I did a movie with him, um, and then I ran into him about a month later, and he looks at me and goes, ah, dad, dad, and gave me a hug. It was from Dirty Grandpa. Right, right, right. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I guess he was my dad. Yeah. <laughs> that's all he could yeah. pull in the moment. He, could, he, thought, he got D. Yeah. And that's all he could construct. But, uh, you know, I've been off him, you know, Streep, so, you know, Pacino. I just, you know, uh, it's, I, I, the first time I met Pacino, uh, I was doing The King and I on Broadway. Yeah. Doing the King and I, he was the king, okay? Represent. Etc. 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 And so I used to take the. Uh, uh, I, was, I was living out on Long Island, and I would take the uh, the train into Grand Central and walk up to the to the theater on 52nd. Uh, and at the time, Pacino was doing uh, Huey at Circle in the Square. Okay. Right. And I and I see him walking up to me, and he's got on a nice suit, and he's already in character. Uh, he's, he's he's walking down the street and he's you know he's being a little loose because the the character spends the whole play drunk, and he's walking down he's walking down and he walks and he stands right next to me and we're waiting across the uh, the street, and I'm thinking oh my god do I say something do I do I say something you know because he's he's in character and he's got his shades on and, uh, so finally I, I mean I would go um, uh, Mr. Pacino hi Lou Diamond Phillips I'm a huge fan oh Lou. <laughs> My daughter loves you. <laughs> you know, so I uh, have a great show. You too, Lou. Yeah. Okay, now, you know, it's funny. Because back in the day, Pacino used to talk like this. That's, that's my family, Kate. That's not me. Luca Brasi works for my father. Right? And then he wins an Oscar for, you know, uh, a scent of a woman. And now suddenly he talks like this for the rest of his life. <laughs> Would you? I mean, I'm just saying, it's a smart move. It's, yeah, no, yeah, if I win an Oscar, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Point. It's true. I actually, I want to, I want to pitch right now that there should be a one-man show of Lou Diamond Phillips yeah. who does the voices, starring Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. <laughs> that was fantastic. You know, we, Dude. yeah. He's, he's had this skill his whole life. It's incredible. Course, it's true. And it's never really been exploited. So I'm glad it's happening I here today. It. But you know what I pictured is we'd actually get Nicholson and De Niro and Pacino and have them out here lip syncing while Lou talks. <laughs> that's a fantastic idea. Oh my God. Nicholson would be just moving his lips. Yeah, that's all he has to do. He doesn't have to strain himself. <laughs> just smile and raise an eyebrow every once in a while. It's gonna work. We're gonna take that show on the road. So, so Dermot, you're now the director. Okay. No, no, I'm first in line, and I'll I'll, I'll spend the twelve dollars like everybody else. Fair game, fair game. Um, when it comes to versatility of your your acting genres, I mean, you guys cover everything. Do you have a particular favorite genre to work in, and why? Westerns, and because of Young Guns, and my dad. I mean, you say that? I mean, you like say that? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, uh, which is why I've done so many genres, I'm a huge fan of the genre of employment. Oh. <laughs> All right. And that one, it's the, the best it's genre. The the best. Yeah. Paid employment, even better. Yeah. Even better. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I love that. Do you, do you have um, a particular thing that you've not done that you are eager to try to step into a little bit? Well, you you got to do the rom com because you're such a handsome fucker. I mean, uh, that is a problem. Yeah, yeah. I, they, don't, they don't. You know, I, I'm either gonna make you cry or I'm gonna stab you. They they don't put me in rom coms. You know. So, uh, but I do love comedies, and and, and uh, you know, I, I pop up a lot of times. I wouldn't. I don't even read the script. It's like you know, you want you want to do a you know a couple of episodes of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Done. You know. Of course. I mean, so I I I, I love. The comedy genre, and, and partly because I, I don't get to do it that often. Of course, of course. And so, you know, to go on and, and sort of be silly and, you know, step away from the brooding ethnic every once in a while. <laughs> brooding ethnic? You're powerful, though. You're powerful with it. I brood. You do. You do so well. <laughs> I, I've never, I never did a. Now that I'm this age, I, I guess I didn't want to because it's terribly uncomfortable. Some of the films that we've done over yeah. the years are. 
terribly uncomfortable, mm -hmm. including the Western genre film we did, How Am I Doing? Yeah, um, good job. Um, which was alternately freezing cold and then burning hot oh, and everything else in between wow. that you see in that Western genre film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was so pissed off when I heard that they made a movie called Saving Private Ryan and nobody had called me. I was pissed. I understand. I heard about it, like in the newspaper. I'm like, that was supposed to be my war movie. That was so I never got my war movie. You never got your war movie. Yet. 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 Yeah, but now I'd have to be like, ah, the president. I mean... Or are they all general? <laughs> I think there's some things in there, though. I think there's some things in there. You're looking very colonelish these days. You get colonel, colonel. Yeah, I played a, oh no, I have played a colonel. Uh, that was in. Uh, let's see what kind of genre that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in an ensemble pleasant movie mm -hmm. genre, a wildlife film mm -hmm. having to do with um, our native north in Alaska. Has anybody got the title yet? Because I can't. No. 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 Shh. Hush. Um, Hush. We don't That's say not one, though. That's not right, one. Right, right, right. But we don't say titles. Don't do it. Oh, then I can't either. But it, right, it right. involves some wonderful actors. There you go. <laughs> and a couple of whales. Come on, guys. Kid. They were trapped under the ice. <laughs> it wasn't very popular. Or one person in here would know that I'm talking about. The true paramour with John John Krasinski and me and like Rob Riggle and right. everybody else. It was a what big. A it was big. Yeah. Movie. That's all right. Shh. Right. We don't remember the name, but it was. Don't a great remember movie. the movie. We're titleless today. Um, titleless. Yes, titleless. We're yeah, also genreless, which makes it very difficult to well, describe in this context. That's all right. I tell you what. What we will do is we will pivot, and I want to talk about a skill set that you each employ um, wonderfully, dynamically, and separately that we should know more about, and it's your music. Derby, you talked about playing the cello, and. That is fascinating, because not only did you do it in high school, um, but you are in a band, and or have been in a band, and released music for that. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Worked on scores, like all yeah. kinds of amazing things. Mission all Impossible, kinds of I mean, amazing wait, things, not yeah. that, the, I don't even know how to say it, spy drama series, you did some music for one that has a long movie franchise? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's nicely done with this genre. I try, I try. Um, yeah, that's, it's, it is, it's the most incredible thing. I don't know how to describe it. I've played the cello in so many different ways. On television shows yes. in the 80s, there's one. There's a Peter Bogdanovich film that nice, I played nice. the cello in, yes. even though it's about country music. Well, uh, There's other places that I put it on screen. I've also played in rock bands. One of them I can talk about freely was named Low and Sweet Orchestra hey, that was in the 90s. Absolutely. And then the teens had me uh, grouped up with a couple of same guys. Cranky George, all of these you can <laughs> find digitally. Um, and I got country music coming next, but Lou and I—that's where we jumped off from that hotel bar in Santa Fe while we were making that western genre. <laughs> <laughs> and um, each of us—I wasn't even a guitar player yet. The keeper was, and he played a lot. That's what I was. Never mind. So I'm just <laughs> set it up, and Lou make it funny. Go, buddy, go. This shit was hilarious. <laughs> well, we, we would get up and. Uh, 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 I think it was Emil who decided uh, in that Western genre film with some young guys <laughs> that uh, uh, our um, uh, theme song was knocking on heaven's door. Knock, 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 knock. Right? Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. we would play it every single night. We'd all play. get up there. Well, <laughs> we were pretty drunk by that time. Yeah, and like on the microphone and same song every night. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. That's so, how we did it. So yeah. like the evening would go like this. I dust off your boots. How you hand the reins to the wrangler. Yeah. <laughs> Walk away from your horse. <laughs> I like how don't you feed it, don't do anything, don't care about the animal, you know what I mean? Here's my hat, here are my spurs. Can you take my boots off, honey? Yeah, there you go. This is the tough life of a Western genre actor in the 80s. Um, do you want, no, no, I'm fine. I don't need another Gatorade, thank you, right? And then we get in a car where somebody drives us directly to the bar at the motel. Because <laughs> they do, they do, yes. And we'd all meet there about 10 minutes after rap and yeah. go all night. It is yeah. an amazing time and place. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and I think all no of us, no self Casey already played it. That's right. right. It's very true, there wasn't any distractions, so what you had to do was make music. Casey was already a really good guitar player, yeah. um, and everybody, everybody else since, yeah. I mean, I learned guitar because of those nights. I thought, well, shit, Kiefer can fucking <laughs> box 
watch that and everybody claps. I can play guitar. Which is ridiculous because I did a rock and roll genre movie. Yes, yes. And I don't actually play the guitar. What? I don't play the guitar. Not That's an even higher level of your acting chops. Because no, I, I had to learn, I had to learn everything by rote. It was, wow. yeah, uh, um, and, and I had a week to do it. Oh, That's incredible. Yeah. But you are a fantastic vocalist. I, I'm a better singer now than I was then. Of course. Um, uh, and it's interesting because I did not sing in that rock and roll genre um, That's true. movie. Uh, it was David Hidalgo from uh, Los Lobos who did all the other uh, uh, stuff. Yeah. And those guys are unbelievable. So I had to lip sync to 16 different songs. But um, picked up the singing afterwards, was with a band, uh, kind of a bunch of uh, Texas expatriate friends of mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were like a glorified garage band, never recorded, sadly enough. But um, I, it's so bizarre. I mean, I, I often call my, I often say I am not a singer because I have good friends who are like ridiculously good singers. I mean, they're rock stars. Yeah, and, you're a rock star. And Broadway people. And uh, so I go, yeah, I'm an actor who can carry a tune in a bucket. But I've been singing so much lately. I sing on, uh, oh, I can't mention that. It's no, no. Animation. Animation. It's an animation genre we thing go. with one of those big struck companies. Mm. Uh, that uh, that you know, you're singing on. Yeah, I, I, I sing, I've, I've sung on a couple of those. Uh, I did uh, The Masked Singer earlier this year. Yes, you did. Wow, I missed that. Really? Yeah. I know. Oh, no. Well, I got it. I got it. It was crazy. Look at that. What, yeah. what, was, what was your, can we talk about that? It's out. It's out. I believe yeah. it's out. I know, but are, uh, are, is, is Lou striking on something about no, 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 the we can costume talk, singing we can, thing? Talk, <laughs> we can talk about the process of trying to sing in a costume. What was the process yes. like trying to sing in a, in a random costume that looked like what? A mantis. Yeah, a mantis. That's I what I wanted to ask. Jacket. And that must have been a challenge for you personally. Uh, I, I, dripping, <laughs> dripping wet uh, at the end of every song. Awesome. It was, it was crazy. And, uh, awesome. Uh, the, the process. I'm like the inner monologue of every woman in this room. Judge the way I the mantis costume. Go on, Lou. I was, I was, I was hot and sultry and dripping. I, I, I got a text. I got a text, mom. I got a text, mom. <laughs> Next question about nothing. <laughs> No, Nothing he's to gonna, see here. He's gonna come back. He's like, so when I strum a cello, so, so very nicely. <laughs> gonna, yeah, that was a good leg. That was a good leg. That, that, was very nice that leg. new hip really worked. That so, new hip really works great. Right? I love it. I love it. So before we let you guys go, I'm curious if you'd be down to play a little bit of a game that we have called This or That, where we throw out like two things. And you have to pick between them. And then we're going to go to the audience and see which one of those you guys would be into. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, no pressure. It is a little personal. Which would you choose between pizza or burgers? Are, are we supposed to say? You don't have to sing, but you can say. Oh. Sing it. I mean, now that you said that. No, I, I didn't say sing. Are we, are we holding our answers oh, no, no, no. for later? A burger. Yeah, yeah. You go burger? Pizza. Pizza. Okay, so we separate. Dude. Okay, so I got to know how many of you guys like Dermot or Team Burger? We. And like Lou? Team Pizza? <laughs> What's the other one? Pizza the Woods? Or a pool. The Woods. Or a pool. Oh, pool. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Woods. <laughs> I don't really like getting wet. <laughs> now I caught that. I caught that. Whoa! Whoa. Good night, everybody. Totally. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the inner monologue of the women. <laughs> Anyhow, skip it. I love it. I love Two L's like Phillips when you call HR, please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not again. <laughs> when you start eating olives like that one time. Oh, olives are gross. I love it. Lou, what about you? What'd you say? Oh, the beach. The beach. Yeah, okay. I, I, I grew up, I was, you know, spent some time in the Philippines, Corpus Christi, Texas. Love it, love California, it. California. Uh, yeah, oil so. Yeah, yeah, right? Uh, so, no, yeah, uh, the, the, the beach is sort of ingrained. Gotcha, gotcha. How many of you are team beach? Woo! Okay. How many of you are team pool, though? Woo! Quiet How many second. people are team woods? Yeah, team woods? Better choice. I like it. I like it. All right, I'm You're going to need to make up more rules if you want me to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's check your sweet tooth. Let's check your sweet tooth. Chocolate. Ooh. Ditto. <laughs> All right. Next question. <laughs> How many of you guys like chocolate? 
to tell you something. How many of you guys have chocolate on you right now? Yeah, see, that's how we do. Mine's in my back. Milk or dark? Well, unfortunately, I'm moving toward dark. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna tell you something that's just gonna blow your mind. I'm actually allergic to chocolate. Uh, we're sorry. No, 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 don't be sorry. It makes me your best friend because you never have to share with me, ever. It's got the built-in line. Right? So what age did you come up with? That's good for you that I'm allergic because there's more chocolate for you. At what age? Seven. Seven, absolutely. And, and every girlfriend that I've ever had loved worked because when the time came that she needed chocolate, here, honey, I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna leave you alone. So you can touch the wrapper? I can touch the wrapper okay. and then run away. That's it, that's absolutely it. No, I love it. Um, okay, last one, novels or comic books? Oh, that's easy. Novels. Com yeah, yeah. Com no, com com no, 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 novel novel books. Uh, <laughs> comics, I'm back to comics. You're I wonder why. Come on, come yeah. on. Uh, yeah. For reasons known that we can't talk about, but yeah. I love that. Were you always a comic fan? Um, as a kid, it's complicated. Um, but yes. Okay, okay. Of a certain type. Gotcha. Um, and now, what I like is, um, I'm way behind, like 10 years behind. Chew. Oh, like that's Tony such a great book. Big and, shout out, big yeah, shout out. And, John um, um, another one I'm not going to mention. And yeah, other stuff that I can't talk I understand, about. I understand, I understand. And some other ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I'm reading mm -hmm. currently. Well read, well read. I like that. Who did you not read comics growing up or anything like that? No, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't much of a comics guy. Uh, okay. uh, always a big, big, big reader. Uh, uh, English minor in college. Come on now. Uh, and what's, what's interesting though is the, the Tinderbox started out with my wife Yvonne. Uh, and, uh, when we first got together, she, she was re reading a lot of my writing. Mm -hmm because I'm not known for that, and she is an amazing, amazing illustrator. Come on, give some love. And she had actually done panels because originally she was going to do a graphic novel yeah. uh, uh, based off of Hans Christian Andersen's The Tinderbox. And I saw this and I went, oh my god, this is a movie. Now this was before Game of Thrones, but space was always popular. Of course. And she was, okay, we'll write it. So fine, I, I uh, took, took the, the, the core story from uh, Hans, and uh, created a, a sci-fi fantasy kind of galaxy far, far away kind of, of situation. Um, and it, it's not really my genre, but I don't know, it, it, it just sort of worked out. The funny thing is, is that, you know, when it came time for, for Yvonne to illustrate it, she's like, fuck you, I don't do sci-fi, I don't, I do spaceships and robots and weird creatures, I don't do that. You know, and, but but she did and did it extremely well. Of course, and you know, got out of her comfort zone. Uh, but it started off life as a, as a graphic novel, and you know, I mean, uh, oh, the funny thing is when I when I finally uh, wrote the screenplay, I realized it was too damn expensive and nobody would ever give me the money to direct it. Well, and that's why I wrote the novel. There we go. Okay. Okay. Wow. Make some noise for that, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, how many of you are team comics? Okay, I like how you had to think about it, like, should I answer? I don't know. <laughs> how many of you are team novels? <laughs> well, Ray. Lou is so crushing me. Have you noticed? Like, am I like, yeah. Anyway, can, is there a way I can win this? We still this? love you, though. We I still mean, love is there a time clock, or are there innings, or how does this work? <laughs> More rules, please. Yeah, there, there, Lightning there round? No prizes. There are no prizes. Lightning round, Lightning something round. where I can Lightning catch round. up. Got <laughs> me by three strokes. Okay, so here's, here's for the win, okay? Regardless of yeah, the no, current, regardless of your answers, oh, okay. so even the loser can win. This is it. This is it. Okay, here we go. If you're eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, do you want the peanut butter at the top or on the bottom? Just turn the sandwich over. I mean, you could, but that's that's the question. Like, how do you turn it? Do you want the peanut butter on the top or do you want it on the bottom? I'm gonna come at this from the chef side. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. You spread the peanut butter first, so the peanut butter ends up on the bottom. That's your, okay. that's your foundation, that's your bottom layer. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, rinse the knife because I don't want to put the leaf peanut butter residue okay. in the jam okay. jar. You can't just, yeah. Yeah. You can't just yeah. rinse yeah. a yeah. knife. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just rinse a peanut no. butter knife. Yeah. Yes, you do. You rinse it, but you also have to either like yeah. scrape it off yeah. or wipe yeah. it on your with, pants with or something. Finger, then you <laughs> you do that. I knew there was more. That, like, <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Was that him lipping peanut butter off? Imaginary <laughs> peanut butter off his fingers? Yes, it was. Okay, go on. Yeah. You, I, I realized, you know, I got a whole new genre for you, dude. You need to do audio romance novel books. Audio romance novel books. Yeah. All right. I'm in.
Count me in. Is there any romance in your novel? I haven't had the pleasure of reading it. It's a, it's a love story. There's a little well, romance. Well, call me up. Call me up and I'll read that part. No, unfortunately, we're all playing dads now, so. Dads can be romantic. Come on. Okay, so. You're saying well, we'll foundation see. peanut butter? If, it, if there's anybody out there <laughs> who can make dad romantic, I'll take that on as my next challenge. Yes. <laughs> Jeffrey, what about you? How would you would you do peanut butter down on the bottom or on the top? Well, I make a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, so I put the jelly on top, and um, yeah, I guess I. I scrape the knife on the peanut butter mm -hmm, jar mm -hmm. to preserve that amount of peanut. We're an economical family. We don't just like randomly wipe it and like <laughs> go down the sink. Um, and then carefully get uh, like Marge always did for Homer. Okay. Get that jelly right to all right to all the corners. I think about Marge every time I make a peanut butter sandwich. But I don't make those for me. My peanut butter swag is to toast the bread and then bring the jar to the table and put one bite on at a time. So it doesn't melt, but it's on hot toast. That is next level. That is, that's like deconstructing. Yeah! I thought he went, I can see. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you're going to have and to. no win. knife issue, right? Because there's no jelly involved. It's just straight peanut butter. When I, I used to take them down. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to tell it. In my school, I grew up in Virginia, in a very racially balanced area. Um, <laughs> so there's kind of a dividing line between somebody who brings a toasted peanut butter sandwich yep. in their in their white, yes, in their brown bag lunch <laughs> to school, and that would be my, my side of that racial divide. Yes, yes. Um, and the rest of everybody ate whatever they wanted, but boy, I got a lot of trouble. That was called a choke sandwich. Wow, <laughs> wow. Just straight peanut butter. I mean, not just straight peanut butter. There was like grace involved. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Okay. Of course. No, we all course weathered it great. I took it. I was like, gosh, those kids. They think us white kids with toasted peanut butter is something they can make fun of, and so I let them, and we all got along. <laughs> That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you become a peanut butter icon. and racial harmony in there the we... 70s in Northern Virginia. <laughs> Thank you. Thank toast you. I was a big part of that movement. Toast and peanut butter, people. I was young, but I was not so much as Lou, but I was kind of a trailblazer. Yeah, you were. In my cafeteria. We, we said it before. <laughs> we told you. That's how it is. And that's how we're going to do it. Fan Expo Chicago, make some noise. Show some love.